Okay, so uh, good evening, students. Again, this is Dr. Zhong. So today we're going to continue our discussion on graph data structure. So last time we talked about how to represent a graph uh, in uh, by using a computer program. So we we said that there are two ways. The first way is to is named adjacency list in which we create a adjacent uh, and a linked list for every node, uh, so, so which includes the the neighbors of that of that node, and also we uh, we talked about the other way to represent a graph that is named the adjacency matrix. So for a graph that includes n nodes, we basically create a a n by n matrix, and with this matrix we we set a, a particular style of the graph as why if there is uh, a certain uh, edge starting from a node to the other one. Otherwise, we just set, uh, we just fill that place with zero. So and then after that, we learned two uh, search algorithms in graph. The first one is named the breadth first search. And so the, the idea is like, say we, we, we gradually, gradually increase the, um, the, the search radius and then so uh, until we, we finish visiting all the nodes inside a graph whereas for uh, depth first search uh, we uh, what we do is like uh, if we pick one direction we go to the very end of that direction and then make our uh, make a your turn come back home and then go to visit another place so uh, go to visit the, the the other direction so uh, this is the uh, the two search algorithms that we discussed last time for uh, DFS. I, as I mentioned, uh, it, it is relatively complicated. So I don't expect you to have a very good understanding of it. Instead, I, so I, you just need to know there exists such an algorithm. And also what I said is that in, D, in the depth for search algorithm or DFS, we associate each node with uh, four values, so which includes the parent, the color, and also we we associate each node with two time, which is the discovery time and finish time. So discovery time means that what is the first time, so for, for example, this is home, what is the first time when we go uh, when we go, uh, go to visit a node? And then uh, finish time means what is the, the time that we uh, we pass by that place when we uh, make a your turn to go home. So so uh, These are just the two time and the time starts from zero until two to uh, two times n. so uh, this is the uh, Sorry, the time starts from one and and until two times n where n is the number of nodes inside the graph Okay, so uh, last time I, I, I told you that the only thing I expect you to, to know uh, for uh, depth of first search is, is the discovery time and finish time. And the reason that why I require you to know them is because we're going to use them in the uh, algorithms that we discussed today. So the first algorithm that we're going to discuss today is named topological sort. So topological sort is the, the idea of topology uh, or the, the definition of, of the topological sort problem is, is relatively complicated, but I will just try to uh, uh, explain it in a, in a relatively interpretable way. So here we say that we're giving a directed graph. So, so re, uh, try to recall what is a directed graph. A directed graph means that every edge in the graph includes a direction there is uh, is associ so is associated with a direction like Twitter. If I follow you, it's not necessary for you to follow me. So, so if uh, so, it's necessary to associate an edge with uh, with a uh, uh, with a direction denoting okay where does it start and where does it end. So, or in Twitter, it's like who is following who, and. So, so, and so the topological sort algorithm is basically gives us uh, an ordering. So it's, it's more like a sorting algorithm over the nodes in, uh, rather than, so previously we learned sorting algorithms like uh, quick sort, insertion sort, merge sort. In, uh, in these sorting algorithms, we are just, we are just say, say, uh, 
uh, uh, sort the, those values uh, from uh, by by using the assigning order. So so and the, the reason for us to know that a value, let's say we have two values, two integers, v one and v v two. So if v one is is less than v two, we know that um, in a in a in a sorted uh, algorithm, we know that v one should appear before v two. Okay, so this is the the uh, how we decide the order uh, by uh, in sorting numbers when we are sorting numbers this is how we decide uh, the uh, the uh, the the order so if v1 is less than v2 then we know that v1 should go before v2 in the result so whereas for um, for topological sort or sorting nodes or sorting nodes in a graph so the way for us to arrange the relative order between two, two nodes are that, okay? If there is an edge that starts, starts from um, u to v, from v, sorry, from v1 to v2. That's just for example, there, there are two nodes, v1 and v2, then there is an edge starting from v1 to v2. Then we know that, okay, v1 should go before v2, okay? So <clears throat> this is how we decide who should go first. If there is an edge starting from v1 to v2, then v1 should go before v2 in a sorting, in a sorted list of the uh, of the of the nodes. So, and some of you may wonder, okay, why do we have this algorithm? And let me give you an example. So the example is here, okay. So in this example, we we just create. So we just create. A graph with where the nodes denotes the different pieces of our clothes that we need to put on in the morning, and the edges den denotes who should go before whom. Uh, what what kind of clothes should should go before the other piece of clothes? So for example, we know that we should put on our undershorts before pants. So we create an edge starting from undershorts to pants, and also we know that we should put on pants before belt. So we create an edge starting. From uh, starting from belt to, to uh, sorry starting from pants to, to belt, and also we know that we should put on our shirt before putting on our belt as well as the tie. So shirt should go before belt and tie, and there is an edge be, uh, from shirt to belt and tie. Also, we know that we should put on socks before shoes. Okay, so etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And so this. Uh, so with this graph, with this graph, we can what we know is that is is that the relative order between two pieces of clothes, and but what we want to figure out from this graph is like, in what in which order should we put put on this this clothes so that we don't we don't get into a very embarrass embarrassing uh scenario where uh. We put on our pants before on the shorts, or we put on sh shoes before socks. So, um, so basically, we want to get an order of of these nodes. And so, this is the very famous of a very famous application of topological sort. So, as we said that, um, so topological sort basically sorts the nodes based on the topological structure in the graph, and. So the way to, to for us to source the the the, the uh, nodes uh, in by following the topological order is totally based on depth first search algorithm. So first we're going to call the depth first search algorithm, and so that we can get a, a finish time for every vertex, uh, and for each vertex, so for each vertex uh, after each vertex is finished. And then we just insert it into the front of a linked list, and then the return linked linked list can help us to tell which piece of clothes should go before which which one. So here is one example, okay? And so this is the example. Here, uh, so so for for every node for every node we associate uh, so we can we uh, we we put a a uh, discovery time and finish time. Around them, so we need to pay more attention to the finish time. So, basically, if if they if they uh if a node finishes first, and then we insert it into the uh, the beginning of the uh, into the the uh 
they uh, are into the beginning of a linked list. And then next time when another node is finished, then we just insert that node into the beginning of the linked list. So, so here is the result. From all the nodes, we can see that, okay, jacket has the smallest finish time. So jacket should go Go to the uh, go to the linked list first, and then uh, it's, it's tie. So tie should go to, to go before jacket, and then uh, so the the next node with the the smallest uh, finishing time is just about whose finishing time is seven. So about goes before tie, and then the next one is short. Okay, so then. Um, so after uh, after short, the next one who finishes is just the watch. Okay, and then it is the uh, the sh shoe. Uh, it is the shoes. And then it is pants, undershorts, and then socks. Okay. So this. This linked list can tell us, okay, which piece of clothes are we going to put on first and then second, etc., etc. So we are going to put on socks first, then under, then under shorts, and then pants, shoes, watch, shirt, belt, tie, jacket. So from here, we what we know is that absolutely, absolutely, this makes sense, right? So, so uh, this does not give us a, a, any embarrassing situation. So and also we need to make. Uh, Think about that. So, our objective is is to sort the nodes such that for every pair of nodes, if there is a, a, a an edge from v one to v two, then v one should go before v two in a in a sorted in a, in a sorting result. So here, I'm just going to uh, uh to denote the 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 edges in a graph. Draw the edges in a graph. So we have an edge from under shorts to to pants. Okay, sorry. Okay, we have an edge from <clears throat> from under shorts to pants. We have an edge from under shorts to to shoes. Okay, so for for paint for under shorts, there is an edge from 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 to, to pants and shoes. So, but yes, it goes before pants and shoes. And for pants, there so for socks, there is an edge from to to shoes. Okay, this is also no problem. Sh socks go before shoes. And also for pants, uh, there is an such a, such an edge, no problem. So for uh, we also have an edge from pants to belt, no problem. Uh, pants go before belt, and then we have an edge from shirt to belt, and from shirt to tie, yes, no problem. And also we have an edge from belt to jacket, from tie to jacket, no problem. And we have an edge from. <coughs> Uh, let me see what else. No, so that's pretty much it. So, so for every edge in the graph, we know that, so if there is an edge from v1 to v2, then we know that in the linked list, v1 is, is before v2. So this satisfies our requirement, and this is the way for us to do topological sort. So and the time complexity of this. Uh, so now let's look at what's the time complexity of this algorithm. So previously I, I said that. To infer the time complexity of a certain algorithm, we need to pay attention to two parts. The first is the function call, and the second part is any loop, for loops, or yes, basically it's loop, loops like for loops or while loops. So here we got a function call. We call the DFS function. We call the DFS a function. So what's the complexity of DFS? It is O V plus E. So we got O V plus E complexity in the first line, and then let's look at the second. Line. For each edge, for each vertex that is finished, we insert it into the front of a linked list. The insertion complexity of a, of a, so so of of a linked list is just O one, and so for each node we do this. For each node we we have O one complexity. So in total we have O v complexity, in here, and then so next is just return with O one complexity. So in total, we just sum them up. And what we can say is that the complexity is two v plus e. So, and also by convention, we're going to ignore the constant. So then we end up with v plus e complexity. So this is the complexity of topological sort algorithm. 
So uh, the second algorithm is named strongly connected component. So strongly connected component is a uh, in, so so uh, help us to discover the the cluster or or a community from a directed graph. So so given a directed graph, so we want uh, uh, a strongly connected component is a subset of the of the of the uh, of the nodes such that for every pair of of the nodes in the in the community there is a way for us to go from u to v and also there is a way for us to to go from v to u so let's look at what does that mean so here we have a directed graph so so and so so what we say is that this is a strong strongly connected component because for every node so this strongly connected comp components includes three nodes so for every pair of nodes just for example from a to b we can find a way from b to a we can also find a way so uh, and also let's say from a to c is sorry from a to e we can find a way from e to a we can also find a way there is a route and so so uh and there is so so if we just include one more node let's say if we can include one more node f into this this community so the answer is no so for example we can find a way for, uh, to go from a to f right over here but we cannot go from f to a so uh so that's why this is not uh so we cannot include f into the into this strongly connected component and actually uh, in this graph, we can discover four strong, strongly connected connected components. So a very famous application of this of this uh, algorithm is that so by analyzing a directed social network, for example Twitter, where we will be able to infer what kind of people or should be should stay inside the same community, so that. If we just run some campaign, run some advertisement, we know that we should push the same uh, push the same advertisement to each community because each community is going to have a special interest. So we we basically are going to analyze every every community or every every strongly connected component individually, and then we we know okay what kind of things should we recommend to them, what kind of advertisement should we recommend to them. So it has a, a wide application in, in uh, uh, so in social network analysis. So the again the uh, uh the source code of uh, to discover strongly connected component strongly relies on uh depth first search algorithm. So the algorithm goes in this way. So if in the first step we are going to call the DFS algorithm on the graph and so that we can get the uh, the finishing time of every node inside the graph and then we're going to compute gt so what does gt mean what does t mean t means transpose okay so um the transpose of so so for example okay the transpose of a graph means this okay if we in the so the transpose of the graph this is g and this is gt okay so the transpose of a graph means this so first gt and g share the same node so they have the same set of nodes but the edges are going to be different so the edges are going to be different the edges are different in this way so in the original graph if there is an edge starting from u to v and then in the transpose the graph we're going to flip the direction of the of the edge with from v to u okay so it's like we basically change we flip the uh, the, the direction of the original graph the edge direction of the original graph so that is the the transpose of a graph and then we're going to call the transpose uh, to call dfs over the transposed graph but in the main loop we're going to follow the descending uh, order of the of the finishing time in the first uh, dfs run so and then we're going to output the vertex the vertex of each tree in the depth first search uh, forest, uh, and then uh, so each each forest or each sorry each, each tree sorry each tree is is pretty much like a strongly connected component. So uh, this is how this algorithm works, and th this is how it discovers these four strongly connected components.
I'm go not going to go over the details of this algorithm again because it relies on D DFS, which is relatively complicated for you to implement in a job interview. So no one is going to expect you to uh, to remember the pseudocode of that. And plus, uh, uh, so 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 uh, in 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 your future work, even if you you will need to implement the DFS search algorithm, so. You can always refer to the book to find the pseudocode and implement that. You don't have to remember the pseudocode uh, as, uh, always. So, uh, so that's why I don't I don't um, require you to have a very good understanding of it as the time of now. And so here, let's look at the so so as you can see that if DFS is not a required algorithm. So 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 it so is strongly connected component algorithm as well as the previous topological sort algorithm because both of them are heavily rely on DFS. So for these three algorithms, we, I just want you to to know there exists there exist such algorithms, and that's it. So for this algorithm, let's let's look at uh, the complexity. So the first line we call DFS. The the complexity is V plus E. V plus E, and for the second line, we just flip, uh, flip the edges of the flip the direction of the edges in the graph. So the complex, the complexity would be O E. For the third line, again, it is a DFS. It, so it is V plus E. So the total complexity of this algorithm is uh, two V plus three E. So we can safely ignore the. The constant and get a v plus e complexity right over here okay so uh, this is these are the two algorithms that uh, we are going to briefly discuss today and next we're going to jump to the uh, minimum spanning tree algorithm so for this algorithm i do expect you to have a very good understanding of it because it is it's it can show up in your job interviews okay so um so let's look at the definition of the minimum spanning tree algorithm. So consider an undirected graph with G, uh, so, so with V as the set of nodes and E as the set of edges. Here, for the first time, we are going to consider weighted graph, meaning that every edge of the graph is associated with an edge, uh, sorry, with a, a, a weight. So, so, and so so uh, and here you can say where are we going to need this weight so for example pre, uh, so for example so if we if we use the direct uh, if we use the undirected graph to represent the road network so from ny to montclair and to philadelphia and so let's say for example this is new work okay so <clears throat> We know that there there is a road, there is a highway from Montclair to NY, and also there is a highway from Montclair to to New York. But in order for for us to be able to use the navigation system, we should def we should at least know okay how long is each each road. Not only just there is a road, but we need to know how long is the road so that we we will be able to get a faster or shorter route. So here. The, the weight associated with a, each edge can either be the distance or can be the time. So here, let's just, for example, this is the time, one hour from New York to Montclair and then from Montclair to, to, to Philadelphia, let's say two hours. And then from New York to New York, let's say again, one hour from New York to, to Montclair, 30 minutes. Uh, th sorry, there's a, 0.5 hours and hour and from Montclair to to uh, Philly it's like two hours so definitely if, if we say that we want to go from New York to Philly it, the navigation system will recommend this route to us because this the the total time spent on this route is going to be some shorter than going to New York first so uh, and that's this is where we're going to need uh, a weighted graph because each edge comes with plays a different import a different role or different is uh, is associated with a different cost or importance so that's why we do this and so 
Here, our input is that we're giving a undirected and weighted graph. So we're so for now we're going to represent this graph with three elements, which are g equal to v, e, and w. W is a function such that for every for every edge inside the graph, for every edge inside the graph, there is a weight. So that w is a function which can tell us the weight associated with the uh, with each edge in the graph. So what we so what so this is the input, but what what's the output? The output wants to uh, with the output we will be able to find out a a cyclic uh, subset of the of the edges, uh, which can help us to connect all the nodes inside the graph, uh, and also the total weight is minimized. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, I do. Uh, so acknowledge that this is the definition of this uh, of this uh, uh, problem is is very confusing. But I'm just going to use one example to to explain it to you in a, in a better way. Okay. So uh, for example, here uh, again, I'm going to use the example of the road network in our country. Uh, so that is okay. So here, uh, we suppose that in a back to, back over two hundred years ago, so there was no highway in the country, and uh, at that time, the the government wants to build the highway to get all the cities connected, so that so to boost the economy. So let's just for example, we got Boston, right over here, and then we got New York. This is DC. And then uh, we got Miami. And straight over here, we got Chicago. And then we have uh, was St. Louis, maybe St. Louis, St. Louis. And then we got, uh, say for example, uh, so St. Francisco. And then we got LA. So the object, so so okay. Here we know that okay. To if we want to build a road from St. Louis to San Francisco, let's say it is two thousand miles, and then if we want to build a road from St. Louis to, uh, uh to uh, L. A. Let's say it is twenty five hundred miles. Well, rides from L. A. to uh to San Francisco, it is just two hundred miles. Okay. And then from Chicago to St. Louis, let's say it's 800 miles. From Chicago to New York, let's say it is 1,000. From uh, New York to Boston, let's say that is 200. Then from Chicago to Boston, let's say it is uh, 1,100. Then from New York to DC, let's say it's 300. From DC to Miami, let's say it is 1,000. From Miami to Chicago, let's say it is 2,000. From uh, Miami to to uh, St. Louis, let's say it's three hundred, th sorry, three thousand miles. Then from LA to to Miami, it is let's say it is uh, four thousand miles. Okay, this is just some some uh, example numbers. So okay, here uh, we 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 denote this number. We use these numbers to denote okay how many miles of road we need to so so our are we going to, to construct to in order to get a pair of cities connected? So at that time, the, the, the federal government has a very tight budget so that they want to build the least miles of road, least miles of road, least miles of the road to, to get all the cities connected, to get all cities connected. Okay? So this is the objective. So then we will need this algorithm called minimum spanning tree algorithm to find to help us find the best route, the, the best road to connect. And the answer right over here would be this. Okay, so uh, we are going to do it in this way, okay? Okay. So this is the set of rows. I'm going to use the red color to denote the set of rows that we are going to, to build. So we got we, we have to build the road from LA to San Francisco and then to St. Louis to Chicago. And then build the road from Chicago to New York uh, to Boston 
and then to DC to uh, Miami. So the red colors denote the road that we we definitely we we have to build, and this is the best best route for us to build because it it includes the least miles of road. While rise it get all the cities connected. So for example, if we want to go from from LA to Miami, so we can follow this route. We can go this route. Okay, we will be able to connect these two cities. If we want to go from San Francisco to Boston, we need to go this route. Okay, so yes, with these roads, we will be able to get all the all the uh, say, say cities connected, and the total miles of road that we 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 need to construct is minimized, and this is the output of the algorithm. Given such a graph, it's able to to find us the 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 route in red colors. You know, okay, these are the the edges that you have to pick, so uh, which comes with the, the least total, least sum of, of the weights, and then uh, so so with this uh, this edges you will be able to get all the nodes in the graph connected, and this is the the uh, the uh, the a very concrete example of this algorithm, and actually this is widely used in practice. So, so um, so here. Uh, is another example. Um, we have a uh, an undirected graph as illustrated as here, and we uh, the 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 min uh, the minimum spanning tree is denoted by uh, the the green background color uh, in the associated with the edge or the red color in the edge. So here the the sum of this of this uh, of this width. Of the weights is four plus seven, eight plus seven plus nine, plus two, plus four, plus two and plus one. Let me say so. Ten, twenty, twenty, and this is thirty-seven. Okay, thirty-seven. So, so uh, this is the total weight. Uh, in the edges that we, we pick, okay, and right over here again, let's say if we can find a, a route to go from A to F, that is over here, yes, we can go, what about from I to, for example, to E, yes, we can go, so for any pair of, of the nodes, we can find a route, so uh, this is the, the definition of the algorithm, and to solve this algorithm, there are two ways, there are two ways, the first, uh, or two algorithms, to, to solve this problem, there are two, two algorithms. So the first one is named Kruska algorithm. So, uh, um, and then the second one is named uh, Prim algorithm. So Kruska algorithm is based on destroying the set, whereas the Prim algorithm is based on uh, priority queue. So here, uh, 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 today, so, so in our course, we're going to focus on the second one named Prim's algorithm because it's, it's more widely used industry and also in your job interview so we're going to skip the cruise car algorithm and just directly jump to to uh to the uh prim algorithm so the third code is over here and uh, so uh it, it takes three inputs g is the graph w is the weight function so which help help us to know what is the weight associated with a certain edge in the graph and R is the root, it's a node, R is a node. R can be any node in the graph, you just need to specify it. So it can be any node. So it's like, it's like from where you are going to start constructing the node, the, 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 uh, the, the road. So, um, and so what this algorithm does is that it first, uh, for each node in the graph, we associate it with a key that is infinity. And then we associate each node with a, a pi, which is the parent, that is new. And for key, we associate it with a uh, uh, a key that is uh, sorry for 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 the root node, we associate it with a, uh, a a a key that is zero. And then we create a queue. So here, that the queue that we create is named the priority queue. Priority queue, okay. Priority queue. So this is a special type of the queue. So, uh, so before I, I go to explain the details of the queue. Let, let me, uh, our details of the of the rest of the algorithm. I would like to briefly, uh, so so this 
now briefly discuss the difference between a queue and a priority queue. So we have queue and priority queue. So, so um, priority queue. Okay. So for regular queue, yes, we just use the queue to store some objects, and then which imp implements a first come, sorry, first in, first out policy. Okay, first out policy. Whereas for priority queue, every node is, associ is associated with a key, okay? Every node is, is associated with a key. And every time we want to remove a node, remove a node, so we are going to re remove, remove the node, always remove the node with the least key, okay, with, which has the smallest key. So you can take it in this way, okay? So um, when we, so when, when we take the, uh, so first come first serve is like a, uh, a, a, a doctor's waiting room or cube pre pretty much implements the waiting list. Okay, whoever comes to the, it com comes to wait first is, is, is going to be able to, to see the doctor or exit the waiting list first. So whereas for priority queue, it, it, so, it, so it basically differs the, uh, sorry, my, my daughter just wakes up. I need to go to check her. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. So then, um, so for for priority queue, uh, it's pretty much like it associates each patient with a different priority. So for example, and the lower the, the number is, it meaning that this this guy has a higher priority. So for example, if we if we say okay, they uh, uh, let me just use an example. So for example, if if it's the president, so. Uh, actually, tomorrow is going to be the election day, so it's going to be very, very interesting. So let's say the pre president comes with the highest priority one, and then the uh, vice president comes with the priority uh, priority two. So then, uh, so a ordinary citizen, a ordinary citizen comes with the priority, let's say ten, and then a legal immigrant comes with a priority, say twenty, and then a illegal immigrant comes with a priority let's say 100 okay and then if this if this five people enter the queue no matter so what is the relative order no matter who comes first then the the one with the lowest priority is going to be able to exit exit the queue first so it's the president is going to be able to see the doctor first and then it's the vice president and then regular cities an immigrant and then a, an illegal immigrant i'm just giving I'm just using this as an example, okay? So, um, so, so, uh, uh, every uh, here, every node or every object comes with a key. So, whoever has the smallest key is going to be able to 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 get out of the queue first. So, with this line, we basically create a queue, uh, a priority queue uh, with all the nodes inside the graph. And while the queue is not empty, we are going to extract the mean. So the extracting mean function is like the DQ function for priority queue. It's, it's, it's going to ex extract the node with the minimum key, okay? So then for each V that is adjacent to U, so I think all of us are familiar with this notation uh, after the, uh, the last class. So if V is inside the queue, so this means inside the queue, and then um, so the, the weight between u and v is less than v and uh, v dot key. We set the parent of v as u, and also we update the key of the of the uh, say say the uh, uh, we update the key of v. Uh, so with w u v, okay, with with the weight of the edge. So uh, let's so again, I'm going to explain it by using an example. So going to use an example right over here okay so uh, first I'm going to write down the, the pseudo code on the left prim algorithm with prim algorithm with with uh, G W and R so for each node u inside G dot V we are going to associate it with a key that is infinity and with a Pi that is new, so but we set the key 
of the root as zero. And then we're going to create a queue with all the nodes inside the graph. So while the queue is not empty, u equal to extract me queue. And then um, for each node v, that is for the JSON to u, that is the neighbor of u. Okay, so then if v is inside q and w u v is less than v dot key, so we're going to set v dot pi as u, and also we're going to set v dot key equal to w u v. Okay, <clears throat> so this is the uh, the third code, and I'm going to write down the, the example on the right. We got f a b c. A B C D E I H I E F G H I Four eight seven nine four eight seven nine ten two one eight ten two one eight So this is the graph seven, six. So this is the graph, okay? And so um, so let's say here, uh, let's just, for example, we pick A as the root. So we actually, any node can be the root. So for now, let's just set R as A. So A is the root. So this is the root node. I'm just going to use a red color to denote it. This is the root. This is our R, the root node, okay? And then, so for every node inside the, the graph, we're so for every node inside the graph, we are going to associate them with a, uh, a infinity uh, key and a new parent. So let's do that. Uh, we're going to associate with an infinity infinity new and infinity new Okay, so every node is associated with an infinity this uh, key and and uh, uh, new parent. So and then we're going to set the uh, set the key of the of the root as zero. So this one comes with a zero key. Okay, and then we're going to create a queue a prior queue that comes with where the uh, so so with every node with all the nodes in. So we're going to create a priority queue. So I'm just going to use a, the black color to know that. So we're going to have the queue with. So this is the nodes and this is their key. I'm just going to, to write down the key right below each node. So we are going to have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. These are the nodes and this is their key. Okay, 
except for a, which is the root. Every node is associated with the infinity key, okay? So then, while the queue is not empty, obviously now the queue is not empty, we're going to call the extract mean function. So which means that the node with the minimum key is going to be extracted from the queue. So for now, in this one, it's going to be a. So a is going to get out of the, a is going to get out of the, the, the uh, we have, uh, the, the queue so we have u equal to a and I'm going to write down I'm going to mark it over here so this is the node u and for every node v that is adjacent to u okay so the neighbors of this node of u includes b and h includes b and h I'm, I'm going to, to write this h in a you know, better way okay so I'm going to use purple color to denote the uh, the neighbors okay so here we have the uh, the neighbors as b and h so b and h so now let's say for for, for the first time let's let's go to let's uh, start with v equal to b so i'm going to put v over here so if v is in the queue so if v is in queue yes v is b so b is in the queue yes it's in the queue and uh, w u v is less than key okay Wv is right right here, which is four, four is, uh, and the uh, so this is a four. Whereas v dot key is what is infinity. So this is also true. True and true is true. So we'll be able to continue uh, to, to to execute the two statements inside the if condition. So uh, we set a v dot pi as u. So we said we we're going to modify its parent as u, which is a. So. It has its parent as a, and we are going to set its key as wuv. Wuv is four, so we set its key as four. Okay, so then we just finish the round with v equal to b. So next we are going to have uh, v equal to h. So v is going to be here. Okay, so and uh, we are going to check if uh, sorry, here we need to up, uh, update the, the key of B. We just updated to 4, so it's right over here. And then, um, uh, so for uh, so now we have V equal to H. Let's first check if H is inside the queue. Yes, it's in the queue. H is right over here. And uh, if WUV is less than key, WUV is, is right over here, it is 8. So WUV is 8. And V dot key of here is infinity its key is infinity so this is also true so we'll be able to execute the next two lines in which we are going to set the width of v as wuv so which is eight and then we're going to set its parent as as u which is which is a so it has its parent as a so here we just updated the width of h as eight so now we finish uh, this for loop so as well as this iteration of the while loop and uh, in this while loop we basically update the weight of b and h so so while the queue is not empty yes it's not empty we're going to extract a mean so the the node uh, um, in the queue the node with the minimum uh, with the minimum key, uh, so so key is going to be with the, with the minimum key is b so okay so the next node to be uh, to be removed from the queue is just b it's gone so uh i'm going to put the sign of b uh, the the uh, i'm going to put the uh the uh, red color around b okay so we have u right over here and uh, we have u right over here and uh, so 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 we're uh, so then so next for each v that is adjacent to u so the neighbors of u includes a and c so this node has two neighbors a and c okay so let's first start with v equal to v equal to a so if a is inside the queue so now a is, is already out of the queue so this is fast so so we don't need to uh, do anything for this iteration of the for loop. And then we just have v equal to c, 
okay vehicle to c so we're going to put v over here so we're going to come so if v is inside the queue or not yes c is in a queue okay so the, the first condition is true next we're going to have ch uh, to check if wv is less than key so u is here v is here wv is eight so this is eight well v dot key is what is infinity so this is true so uh then we're going to set uh v dot pi as u so we're going to set its parent as u okay u is basically b and then we're going to update its key as what as wv which is 8 so it has a uh, a, 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 a smaller weight which is 8 so here let's just also update its weight in a in a queue okay so um so here uh we just finished this iterations uh so as the, the the for loop and then we basically finish one iteration in the while loop and so we are going back to the to the while loop to check if the queue is empty or not obviously this queue is not empty so it still includes size let's say uh, seven nodes so we're going to call the extract mean function so now we got two nodes with uh, the uh, with the small uh, the smallest key which which is c and h for now, we can just pick uh, randomly pick uh, one of them. Let's, for example, let's just pick u as uh, sorry. Let's just pick u as as uh, c. Let's say c is removed. Okay, and then mm, so the the neighbors of c includes the neighbors c of c includes b i and d b d i b d i. So. So previously we know that we're only going to do something for the neighbors of, of u if that neighbor is inside the queue. So over here we can say among the three neighbors, b is already out of the queue. So there is no, we cannot do anything for that. So we can safely remove b and only do something for d and i. So for the first one, let's start with, so I'm going to put the u sign right over here and the, uh, Let's start with v equal to d, okay? When v is equal to d, yes, yes, d is inside the queue. And then what is wv and and v dot key? So u, uh, v is here, okay? So this is u and this is w, u and w, and then wv is seven. V dot, v dot key is infinity, so th this is true. So what we do is that we're going to set, set uh, v dot key as the weight between uh, of of as the weight of, of the edge and also we're going to update its parent as u so its parent is becomes c so here we just update it as seven and next let's have v equal to uh, to i okay so so uh we let me put v the v sign right at i so this is this is uh, i okay so w u v is two and whereas v dot key is infinity so uh this is again true we're going to set its key as two and its parent as u which is which is c okay which is c so um here for i let's just give it a smaller key and then we just finish this iteration. So as this iteration of the while loop, and and next we go back to the while condition, and we say that this queue is not empty yet. And uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to remove the, uh, to call the extract mean function. So i is removed because it has the smallest key. So we have uh, u equal to i and so here let's check what are the neighbors of i in the graph the neighbors of i includes c g h okay among them c is already out of the queue so we can safely ignore c and then only do something for g and h so let's start with v equal to g with v equal to g we have uh so so uh so we are going to check uh to, to check what is the what is wv so v is right over here so let me, let me write u is here 
and then v is here okay v is here so this is u and this is v so the wv is six whereas v dot key is infinity so again this is true so we're going to set its pad its key as the the weight which is six and then we're going to set its parent as as u which is i okay so um and so here we just reduce the key of g to six and then let's do something for h let's do and so we just finish the iteration at g and then let's do something for h so h is sorry this is i and then okay so h is right uh, so h is right over here so we have v here okay so wv is seven so here we have wv as seven and the key of h of v is eight so again this is true so yes we can do something over here we can further reduce the the weight of the weight of h to seven and we set the parent of h to u which is i okay so here uh, the weight of h is also reduced and then we just finish this iteration so so then we go back to the uh to the value Ob obviously the the queue is not empty so here uh we are going to call the the extract mean function so the next node to be removed the next node to be removed is right over here it is g it has the smallest key so we have u equal to g and the neighbors of g includes the neighbors of, of G includes F, I, and H. F, H, I, F, H, I. Among them, um, so, so, F, H, I. I is not in the, uh, I is out of the queue, so we're not going to do anything for that. And then, um, so let's check. Let's, in the first round, we have V equal to F. When V equal to F, I'm, so I'm going to mark u at right over here and f and v uh v right over here okay so um so w u v is two so this is two whereas v dot key is infinity v dot key is infinity so this is true so we're going to reduce its key from infinity to two and then we're going to set its parent as u which is g okay so and then um so the key of f is reduced to, to two and then uh we're going to have another iteration with v equal to h with v equal to h so uh previously we have uh so 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 here we have uh so this is v okay this is v w so so um wv equal to one whereas v dot q is seven so again this is true so we're going to reduce its key from seven to one and then we're going to set its parent to g okay so we finish this situation so now the key of h reduced is reduced to one so we finish this for loop so as uh, this iteration of the of the while loop and then we're going to check if the queue is empty or not obviously it's not empty so we're going to call the extract extract mean function again so uh the node to be uh, extract is going to be h because h has the smallest key which is one so and the neighbors of h includes so h is here we have u here and the neighbors of h includes uh, a uh, g and i a g and i a g and i so among them a is out of the queue and i is out of the queue and also g is out of the queue so we're not going to do anything in the in this for loop and uh, so so then we finish this iteration of the while loop and then we we are going to check if the queue is empty or not so it's not empty and then 
we are going to call the extract main function uh, and then we're going to extract f so we have u equal to f so we're going to put, I'm going to put a u sign right over here and the neighbors of f includes uh, d e and actually c d e g okay c d e g so among them c is out of the queue g is out of the queue so only d and e are inside the queue so in the first one we have uh, v equal to d so v is here okay so we have w v as 14 v dot key as 7 so this is going to be 14 and 7 and this is false, so we're not going to do anything for D. And then we finish the iteration at D. And next, we, we start an iteration at E. So for E, um, so we have, this is V, okay? So WUV equal to 10. We have WUV equal to 10, whereas V dot key as infinity. So this is true, and then we're going to, to reduce the the key of, of V from infinity to uh to to ten and then we're going to set its parent to F. Okay, so uh this is what we do with this for loop and then we we just finish this iteration of the while of the while loop. So uh next we're going to check if the queue is, is empty or not. So sorry, the, the key of E is reduced to 10 already. Okay, so we're going to check if if this uh, queue is empty or not. It's not empty, so we're going to call the extract main and the node to be removed is the node to be removed is d because it has the small smallest key. So we have u equal to d, and the neighbors of d includes c d f c d f. So among them, we can see that C is out of the queue and F is out of the queue. So, sorry, U equal to D, I'm sorry. So U equal to D, to D so it's going to be C, E, C, E, F. So we can see that C is out of the queue and E is out of the, uh, F is out of the queue. Only E is inside the queue. So, so we have V equal to E, V is here and u is here so okay we have so here we have uh, wv as 9 and then uh, v dot key as 10 so yes this is less so then we can reduce uh, its key from 10 to 9 and we're going to set its parent as d okay we're going to set its parent as d so so we finish this for loop so as well this iteration of the while loop and then we're going to check if the queue is empty or not it's not empty we have one last row node which is e so we have u equal to e with u equal to e let's check what's, what's its, what is its neighbor d and f but in this iteration we can pretty say we are pretty safe to say that d and f are already out of the are already out of the queue because uh, e is the last node in the queue okay so now the the queue is totally empty so then uh we're uh, so so then uh we finish this for loop and then we go when we go back to the while loop we say that the queue is already empty so so uh we got nothing okay so we, we got nothing in the queue and then uh, we finish the the while loop so as the the whole algorithm so as the output of the algorithm we we have this okay so we have uh so so the root which is a uh, so its parent as a neo and b b's parent is a and so b's parent is a c's parent is b and d's parent is c e par the parent of e is d and the parent of f is g and the parent of g is i the parent of of i of h is let me say is g okay and the parent of i is c okay so by following the the uh, the parent of of all the nodes we'll be able to reconstruct okay what kind of edges should should be included in the uh, minimum spanning tree that is over here so that is denoted by the red color so in this way we'll be able to 
to discover the minimum spanning tree of the node or uh, of the graph. Okay, so this is the step by step illustration of, of it, and actually it's the same as over here. Okay, so um, so this is the oh sorry sorry it's over here. Okay, this is over here, and uh, yes, this is the the uh, pseudo code of minimum spanning tree. Hopefully you can understand it. So uh, and after this lecture, you are going to have your homework nine. So. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about your homework eight and nine because so far I have already received two, uh, quite two two emails regarding homework eight. So uh, the the so the 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 most difficulty in ho in homework eight is that okay. So how to tell so so in the pseudo code we have this line for you from in this g dot v minus i. So how to translate this uh, translate this line to Java. So I'm not going to tell you directly how to do that, but what I'm going to give you a hint. So here both u is a both u and s are integers. So so here, uh, if you want to so ex so if you want to uh, say 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 what you can do is that for every node, for every node in u in g dot v, if u is not s, u is not s, you do something. Okay. So this is equivalent to here so this is the first hint and then the second the second hint i i can give you with regard to your homework eight is that you can totally ignore the parent information okay so and in homework eight you because you are going to use q so here for q you can either use your uh the q that you, you implemented in homework three or you can use the 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 q that is provided by java its name is actually linked list you can use linked list as as a queue and so check this api and also you can check a couple of tutorials the api is pretty much like the manual of this data structure whereas the the um the, the example or tutorial is pretty much like you go to a video to check how people use use this tool so this is the standard way for you to learn to use a new data structure in java okay and this is homework eight with re regard to homework nine, the 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 most difficulty comes from using, comes from that you you will need to use a priority queue. Okay, so uh, Java provides a priority queue. This time I'm not going to to give you the link. Instead, I I will ask you to find the the link or the resource for yourself. That includes the API as well as a couple of tutorials, and also. Uh, the other difficulty comes from here. That that is pretty tough. So in my experience, okay, homework eight is the most difficult one mm -hmm. among all the ten homeworks that you are going to have. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so so uh, uh, um, the 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 biggest difficulty actually comes from here. While you are going, while you are visiting, a while you are visiting a queue. So so you you have to modify it. You you need to modify the value of the the, the key of the nodes inside the queue. And this is prohibited by Java. When you are visiting a queue, you cannot modify it. So so to overcome this limitation by Java, what you should do is that when you are visiting this queue, you are basically creating another queue with the value with the key of the nodes modified. So as at this time point, you may not understand what I'm talking about, but when you start doing your homework and when you see the arrow uh, after you, you, you click drawn on your code, you will be able to gradually, gradually realize what I'm talking about. This is, this is going to be a very tough procedure, but it's, it's going to be really beneficial. And also, uh, and also say, say uh, if you do good in your homework eight, it's going to be pretty easy for, for it's going to be sorry if you do good in your homework nine. It's going to, to be pretty easy for to do your homework ten. You only have to spend half an hour, and do a very small revision. So so it's so it's going to be like, I mean, worthwhile. Pretty pretty worthwhile. You have to 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 spend your time on it. So I, I what I remember is that when I was a student to implement the uh the uh. This algorithm, I took more than two days. Uh, I spent more than two days. I, the same expectation I have on you. Okay, if you spend more than two days or even three days, that's that is absolutely normal. 
Okay, so yes, that's the lecture for today and have a good week. And also, before I finish, stay safe. As you can say that maybe around the, the time of, of Columbus Day, I said that I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm 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 not going to be very positive about the the COVID cases in the in the war and and I said that um, Europe is going to be the first place to explore uh, explode. Yes, that's what we see as as the time of North Germany and uh, United Kingdom and also France are going to lock down. So hopefully that New Jersey and New York are going to be strong enough to live through this winter without any lockdown. Anyway, stay safe. Okay, thank you.